what I thought would be interesting to do was now that we are kind of uh, affixed in six railroads in, North, in, in the U.S. and Canada and Mexico, the first one alphabetically is the Burlington Northern Santa Fe. So we're going to look at that. And we're going to look in a little bit more detail at the components that were there in 1950, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy. All right, why 1950 for the Burlington? Well, Burlington, like most of the railroads, it was the mid-century. It was the peak of a steam and diesel transition. About half the railroad about had half their power was steam, half was diesel. Uh, it was also the peak of the route miles, because after 1950 they started abandoning branch lines. And so, uh, so most of the railroads peaked about 1950. It was the first regular year after World War II, because although the government didn't do as much control as they did in World War I, it was kind of the first things that uh, they weren't building mat material for the, for the war. They, uh, Korea hadn't started, so it was kind of a normal year. And it was before the mergers started in the 50s. And the mergers continued through, from the 50s until now. And now we think we probably had the last one for a long time. Um, and, and 2020 is now, um, or actually 2022, but, but um, uh, 2020 da uh, data is available, B-L-E, right? There we go. <laughs> a little crack. Uh -huh. um, and it's after the final round of mergers, 2022, with, with the uh, Canadian Pacific purchasing the the uh, Kansas City Southern. That's that's person pretty much it. We're gonna have six railroads from now on. The Burlington, in its maximum, was uh, from basically from Chicago up to Minneapolis, uh, Chicago across to Omaha, and then up to Billings, and then Chicago to Kansas City, and then they had a bunch of lines in southern Kansas and to Denver, and then Chicago down to St. Louis, and then Chicago down to Paducah, Kentucky, because they had a whole bunch of coal mines and where they got their bituminous coal in Southern um, Illinois. And that was very important when they they um, had steam locomotives, but later it was, it was, for a long time, it was important. And I think they still do, do haul some coal out of, uh, out of Southern Illinois for utilities and for steel mills. And then the Colorado and Southern uh, basically ran from Billings to Denver uh, down to te down to Texas all the way to Galveston. So that's the way the Burlington looked at its maximum. So uh, we will look at statistics, uh, which will include route miles, operating revenue, which gives us an, an idea of the size of the operation, uh, revenue ton miles, how many ton miles it hauls, and, and ton miles again. If they haul, if you haul one ton, one mile, that's a ton mile. Or if you haul a hundred ton car, one mile, that's a hundred ton miles. And we'll look at the rolling stock, steam locomotives, diesels, the total, freight cars, passenger cars. So in 1950, uh, the Burlington had 8,800 route miles. They all say 11,000 miles in 14 states, but it was the 11,000 miles includes the Colorado and Southern which they, which they did purchase. It was a subsidiary until the Burlington Northern merger. Um, but that's so about 11,000 miles. And the Santa Fe was a little bigger, 13,000 miles. And the Great Northern and NP were around 8,000. And then the Frisco about half that big. So in terms of 1950, uh, millions of dollars of operating revenue, uh, the Burlington had 245 million and that's about the size of the Great Northern, a little bigger than the NP, but about half as big as the Santa Fe. Santa Fe was a big railroad. Um, in, term, in today's dollars, if the railroads had not merged and their operations were the same, that'd be about uh, $3 billion railroad. And then the Santa Fe is about, again, twice that big. And the Great Northern and NP would be a little over $2 billion. And now in terms of millions of ton miles, and this is... Uh, uh, well, really billions of miles, but the way they report it is millions of ton miles. And so the, the Burlington had 17,000 million ton miles. And the, the Santa Fe had almost twice as many. The Great Northern, about the same size as the Burlington, the Northern Pacific, a little smaller. And then the uh, uh, Frisco is about half that big. Now, steam locomotives, they had, uh, the Burlington had 657. Santa Fe had a thousand, 
uh, Diesel's uh, Burlington had 448 and the Santa Fe had 967. So again, they were about half, about half. And, and in terms of availability, they actually had more diesels because the, the diesels don't have to spend as much time in maintenance. And then the uh, Great Northern and NP were a little bit smaller. And then the Frisco is about half that big. So, this, so the Burlington had a thousand locomotives, Santa Fe had 2000, Great Northern had about a thousand and the NP a little less. Freight cars, the Burlington had 43,000, the uh, Santa Fe had 35,000. Now I think the, my, my guess is the Burlington had more freight cars because they had more online industries. Online, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Santa, Santa Fe would have more uh, bridge traffic from others. Uh, the Great Northern had 38,000, 37,000 on the NP and 25,000 on the, on the Frisco. Passenger cars, 1950, uh, the Burlington had about 1,000. Uh, Santa Fe had 1,400, um, and the GN had 800, and the NP 400. So, because the NP uh, didn't have not, has nearly as many passenger trains as the Great Northern did. So, is that because of uh, cities and people? Yes, uh, the the okay. NP basically went along their main line, uh, but the Great Northern had all these other lines to uh, that that went up to. Um, uh, they, had, they had more trains going to Winnipeg. They had a lot more trains going to Fargo and Moorhead and, and the Red River Valley. And uh, then they had a lot more trains out west. Yeah. Um, now, the, the history of the, uh, the Burlington itself, the predecessors were first chartered in 1849 in Illinois, in the central Illinois. And so then they formed the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy from these early railroads in 1855. And they linked Chicago by 1857. So here's Illinois here. And so this is all right yeah, kind of in this area. And then they built into Chicago in 1857. Um, and so then the Hannibal and St. Joseph Railroad, which went between Hannibal and St. Joseph. <laughs> it's oh. logical back then. <laughs> they went across northern Missouri, and that became a very important line for the uh, Burlington from Chicago to Kansas City. Um, and then the Burlington and Missouri River went from across, also went across um, uh, uh, Missouri and they bought that. And so, uh, but anyway, they built across uh, Southern Iowa and they reached Lincoln in 1870. And so they were heading, heading west. Um, and then they built west from uh, west from Savannah, Illinois, which is right on the river here, um, here, and so they, the the main line goes across, and that's how the the California Zephyr now goes, kind of comes across here, crosses the river, and then goes goes out to Omaha through Lincoln, and then out to Denver, and then they built on up to uh, Billings, Montana, because they wanted to connect with the the parent companies, Northern Pacific and Great Northern. So eventually they went from Lincoln on up, oops, don't move the map, Ross. Um, Lincoln on up through Northwest uh, Nebraska, over the Sand Hills, up through Crawford Notch, which became rather critical, the Southern end of uh, um, uh, South Dakota and on up to Laurel uh, and Billings. And this line was, it was, there were a few trains on it. There was a, a couple of passenger trains and a few freights. And, and in, the, in the 60s, I remember seeing trains on here and they'd have five SD9s on them. And it was kind of cool to see them because they had, they had some pretty good grades. Um, but then when they, when they discovered uh, the, the Wyoming coal uh, and, and the utilities figured out how to burn it because it's difficult to burn. It's, it's quite a bit less. It's about two thirds of the BTU of, of, uh, of Illinois coal. But right here, they built this coal line and I remember talking, I was out visiting one of the mines and the, um, uh, one of these guys said he had worked in Pennsylvania. And he said, the problem in Pennsylvania is you go down three, you're down 80 feet, you go down 80 feet to get three feet of coal. And he said, in Wyoming, we go down three feet and get 80 feet of coal. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. They would just scrape back a little bit of uh, some places that, you know, it was 20 feet, but a little bit of, uh, um, Overburden, and then there were and then there were these two 30, 35 foot seams of, of coal, 
and there was about an inch of ash in between that must have happened when the coal was laid down but anyway it, it's um it's the big plus to it obviously it was very cheap to mine and, and it's so cheap that you can mine it and send it all the way to florida um, it was low in sulfur and it, low in sulfur also means it was low in mercury because mercury always comes as mercury sulfate so it was about a, it was a quarter of the sulfur and a quarter or less than a quarter of the mercury so the utility said oh hey this is good stuff and it's <laughs> difficult to burn but it uh but it was it was it was low cost and uh um and they could haul it long distance so it was great for the railroads but unfortunately it has carbon and that's a, that's a problem with global warming um so anyway that's the line to billings and then uh then they said well you know we need to get a line uh up the east side of the river the mississippi river the R milwaukee had built early on the west side from lacrosse to saint paul so they they had a subsidiary that built the um, Chicago, Burlington, and Northern built built north um, from Chicago up Aurora out to uh, uh, up here to uh, uh, just in into St. Paul, and then they went on the uh, the Great Northern uh, to get to Minneapolis. And so here here's the Chicago, Burlington, and Northern, and it was built later than the Milwaukee. So there are fewer curves. A lot of it was on causeways, but it was really fast, really fast. So then in 1900, um, you can see why both the, the, the UP made it to Omaha and they also made it to Kansas City and the Great Northern and the NP came to St. Paul, but here's Chicago where all the action is. So uh, Harriman in, in Omaha and Jim Hill in St. Paul said, we want, the, we want the Burlington. And they both they got into a battle for it. And uh, J.P. Morgan uh, liked Jim Hill, and he thought Jim Hill was honest, which he was. He was a tough businessman, but he was very honest. Um, he, he, uh, they got into a battle for the stock. And so uh, uh, J.P. Morgan backed Hill and got him the financing. So he was able, Hill was able to purchase 98% of the stock on behalf of the Great Northern and Northern Pacific. So they owned the Burlington. And if you think about James J. Hill, uh, he saw early on that the Masabi Iron Range was going to be a big, huge asset. And he, the railroad couldn't buy it at that time. And so he bought it on behalf of the stockholders and then gave it to the stockholders, sold it to the stockholders at cost. So he, he was an honest guy. Later, Jim Hill said that uh, he spent far more money than he originally planned on the Burlington but he said it made so much more than even he dreamed of. It was really a good asset and it was a good fit. And it really gave the NP and GN good access to Chicago. So it was a, it was a good asset. So then they decided um, they, they should build, they should buy the Colorado and Southern. And that went from Billings. Um, so Billings up here in Montana, it went all the way across Wyoming down to Denver. And then they had some lines uh, going west uh, in Denver, some narrow gauge lines, but then they went down to the border of, of Texas and then the Colorado and Southern had a, had a subsidiary that, that went from, from the border of Texas down to Galveston. Because as we talked about before, all the railroads in Texas at that time had to be owned by Texas companies. So Fort Worth and Denver was headquartered in, in Fort Worth. And the Santa Fe had had the color, the Gulf Coast in Santa Fe, and the Panhandle in Santa Fe, and all these other railroads. The Missouri Pacific had the Texas and Pacific and International Great Northern, and all these railroads that were headquartered in Texas. 